but there's just been so many different things that have happened over a short period of time that I just I have to talk about it. Hey guys, Madison here. Hey guys, my name is Madison. Welcome to my channel. Welcome back to my channel. For today, I have a story time. Um, and I did this cute little backdrop for one of my finals for college, and I haven't used it at all. <laughs> so I'm trying to like get some use out of it. I have a little chair here now, so I can like actually sit down and like tell stories and stuff. So um, we're gonna talk about a bad friend, and I've had bad friends. <laughs> Like, once I got to college and kind of my senior year of high school, I kind of started respecting myself a little bit more. And so I started getting real genuine friends. Um, but this is somebody from, I guess, maybe middle school, high school era. Um, probably more high school. I don't really think I talked talk to them in middle school. Um, but I knew them through association. They were a friend of a friend's. We're going to call him Dave. Um, so... Uh, we're going to start with the oldest situation. Just in general, whenever me and Dave would have a conversation, it'd be fine. We'd be chilling. And then he'd have like a snap moment. I'm not a psychologist. I'm not trying to diagnose anyone, but he would have such rapid mood swings. And the only way I know how to characterize this, and some people have never seen this movie, so I completely understand. Um, it's the... <laughs> So Shane Dawson had a movie a long time ago called Not Cool and there's a lot of controversy around him. If you like the movie, if you didn't like the movie, I don't care. But there's a character in that movie and it's like just a dramatized high school girl basically. And there's a part where she's like talking to one of the main character girls and she she just starts going on and is like, I love you, you stupid dumb and just cussing at her. And it's like that's what he would do. Like, we'd be having a good time, and then he'd be like, oh my god, you're such a... And I'm like, what? <laughs> I'd be sitting there, I'm like, okay. And it got to the point where I just guessed I was part of his personality. And I was like, okay, I'm just not even phased anymore. I got to the point I just didn't care. And so he'd say stuff like that, and then, like, it got to the point where he'd be like, oh, I'm just kidding. You bit. And I'm like, what? <laughs> I don't feel like bleeping out everything I've gone... A good amount of time without cussing and that's good for monetization eventually um <laughs> and sponsors so i'm just gonna like try to censor myself the best i can but like just cuss word after cuss word just like call me everything in the book and maybe that's what helped me develop a thick skin <laughs> having a friend like that friend um but yeah so there was things like that and we'd be fine and then he'd start doing that and i'd just be like okay like are we done? And it just wouldn't phase me, so he'd kind of get bored. He was one of those friends that would hang out with you if there's nobody better to hang out with. And I've learned that, and those kind of friends suck, and I don't want them around me. Like, if we're friends, we're friends. If you want to hang out with somebody else, that's cool, but like, don't just save me for a last option. That's not cool, and it's kind of weird, but back then, I just didn't care about myself, I guess. So I was like, and I mean, I just wasn't phased by a lot of stuff anymore. So I would just kind of be sitting in a class. If he wanted to hang out with me, he hung out with me. If he didn't, he didn't. Um, but to like categorize ourselves as like close friends and then that happened. Um, but yeah, so it was just a big flip switch um, a lot of the time. And I wasn't sure, almost making me scared. Like I didn't know who I was going to talk to. And I try to keep like names and things and just everything anonymous for the most part. I don't want to become that person where like, and you know, people find them out, they get mad. I don't want to anger this person, but we have enough distance between us that I think we'd be okay. Um, so <laughs> not that anybody that like would really know who this was because a lot of this stuff was private stuff that basically the two of us know. So if they saw it, they would no, I guess, but they don't watch this, so, anyway, aside from that, so, mood swings, not really being a real friend, I guess, um, and then, this is one of the biggest things that I could not find the messages, oh my goodness, I could not find them, I was like, I looked on my, uh, iPod that has a lot of my old messages from, like, weird accounts and stuff, um, because I needed to record it for, certain experiences that I had in my life, and we'll talk about those later, um, 
it wasn't on my computer from photos I saved there. Um, I even downloaded, I downloaded my Instagram data. And the only reason it is not on there because that other person deleted their spam account that they sent this from. So it just like deleted them on both sides. Mm, so I found like, I have a, a big old copy of my data now. So I have a bunch of those messages. Um, so I only have one instance because I didn't save text messages. I didn't do any of that because I didn't think that I'd do this. So I have only one evidence of proof, but um, there was something that I asked. I asked them about this. I was like, hey, cause they brought up some old memory. Just proving how bad of a friend they actually were to me. Um, and I was like, hey, speaking of old memories, do you remember this? And they saw it. Again, they weren't, they didn't need anything from me. They weren't messaging me. So like, of course they're not gonna respond, but like they're the type of person that if they wouldn't have done this, they would have been fighting tooth and nail to be like, I never did that. Like, you know, so I'm waiting to see if they respond to that message, but they saw it and they just ignored it because I know for a fact they did it because they told me they did. Um, so I had to deal with a lot of stuff in high school, like random accounts messaging me, stuff, people stalking me, a lot of crazy stuff. And this person knew this, they knew this and they got with another person and um, somebody that I never had a problem with. And I still don't, I think that in their mind, they were just joking around. Like they genuinely was not that deep to the other person that did this with them. But like my problem is with Dave, because like you can't say this stuff for so long and not mean it. Like eventually, like you start to believe the stuff you say. You can't just call me <laughs> the worst things in the world and not think that I'm a bad person eventually. Like I don't understand the disconnect here. And um, they didn't tell me, Dave didn't tell me that he was part of this until like, uh, maybe it was spring semester senior year. And this happened in the fall, I think. And I've been trying to find him because I know I posted about it and like, I was like, this is weird. Um, but so it started off with like, it was this Bill Cosby picture account <laughs> on Instagram and it messaged me. I can't remember what it asked me like all of the details and I wish I had them. Cause those are weird questions. Like, uh, I think it said, I have some questions to ask you or something. I was like, okay, shoot, you know? And then I was like, uh, what do you think of certain people in high school? And I was like, I don't care. don't really know them. Can't say anything about them. And that was kind of my logic. Like if I didn't know somebody and they hadn't wronged me, I did not have an opinion and I did not care. Um, so there was that. And then I think it went on to something like, uh, what do you think of uh, having people of color in like student body positions or something like that? It was something like, so they could be like, oh my God, you're racist. Like there was something like that. That was also something that he always tried to do was uh, be like, oh my gosh, you didn't give me a quarter, you're racist. Like that was legit conversations we had. It was crazy stuff like that. It was like, I thought we were joking, but maybe he was serious. Um, and I was like, I, what you and I'm sitting here thinking to myself you were in leadership positions like of course I wanted you to be in leadership positions <laughs> it wouldn't make sense you know because majority of our school was people of color so what sense would it make to not have a what so anyway um so I kind of answered that I was like you know everyone just deserves to have equal rights they deserve to be in a because again I didn't know who it was and the way they were asking these questions I thought it was like some kind of like 13 year old like troll account or something I was just like bored so I was like, this is weird. Um, and then like, after that, I was just kind of done with it. I got bored of talking to him and I was like, okay, I'm blocking you. So I blocked it and I remember posting specifically either, it was either on Instagram or it was on Snapchat. But back then on Snapchat, I didn't know how to work it. I got all my social media senior year. So I didn't know how to work it. And I didn't know how to save stories like after you post them and something is in my eye. And I just ate something with hot sauce. So I'm trying not to get hot sauce in my eye because somehow it's gonna get in my eye. Um, so I block the account. I make a post being like, hey, 13 year olds, man, you know, like something like that. And I can't find it, but I am, I have looked, I have scraped through everything because I'm like trying to find evidence, I guess, that I'm not lying. Um, but so that all happens. I think nothing of it. 
Um, apparently this account had sent messages after I blocked them, which, you know, it's fine, you do you. Um, and that comes in handy after I finally unblock them because I realized who this account was. So it was maybe like, we were in English class and I don't know what we were talking about. We were talking about something, I might have been messing with him. And he was like, that's why, and then he stopped and I was like, why you what? He's like, no, I'm not gonna say anything. I was like, just say it. I was like, what? It, what? And he was like, uh, that's why we, uh, me and the other person that helped him with us, we made that account and uh, messed with you that day. And I was like, that was you? I was like, that was funny. You know, like, I didn't think anything of it. They knew I wasn't too bothered by it. So it was kind of weird to try to weaponize that against me, knowing that I didn't say anything wrong. And I was, he was like, yeah, we were trying to see if, um, we were trying to see how you really were. And I was like, what? <laughs> We were supposedly friends, and you didn't know how I really was. <laughs> friends. So that's the big part, and it kind of really upset me knowing that he's known everything that I've gone through, knowing that, like, that does bring up some kind of traumatic stuff. He knew that I thought it was somebody else, and I was like, you know, they're just weird, and they're, like, you know, bad people stuff. And, um, so for him to do it, I was kind of upset. I don't know what my part's doing. Okay, we're just gonna slip it in the middle I just woke up so um that's why like I'm in my pajamas uh so he knew everything in involving that and he still did something like that and it wasn't like ever clear that it was a joke they just kept asking me questions and it was just annoying um and so I found out it was them and I didn't unblock it right then because um every now and then I'll just go through my feed and see who needs to be blocked there's maybe five accounts on my Instagram that are blocked and will remain blocked that's it. Mm. Am I okay? Let's, let's hydrate. If you're not hydrated today, you need to hydrate. Water is good. Um, okay. So, that was the first big thing. That's the first big red flag. There are three in total. So, hopefully this video doesn't go too long. But I'm watching it go a little long. So, we're just gonna power through these. Because they ain't that big. Now, second red flag. I don't have these text messages. I don't know how he got my number, but the way they were written, I have to assume it was him. I don't think they would lie. Um, so it was the day either, no, I think it was the night after my friend's funeral. He passed away recently this year and um, this person went to the funeral. He didn't sit with me. He didn't really say a whole lot to me. Um, you know, he kind of just stuck with his little friends and that's fine, do you? But um, to like not say anything to me, not ask me how I was doing, like this was my best friend of like seven years um, and like didn't say anything. And so I sit with my friend, we, you know, another close friend of mine and we attend the funeral. We do all this other stuff that we were doing. And then I go home, I come back to my dorm and I get these text messages again. I don't, I've changed my number so many times from the stuff that I dealt with at high school. So I have had five numbers maybe <laughs> total. Um, and you know, I don't know how he got my number. Maybe he asked the person that I hung out with that day for my number. Maybe he had it. I'm not quite sure. Um, I don't give my number out that much. So I have no idea who it was. Um, but the way it was worded, the way it was written, I have to assume it was him. He did say it was him. Um, don't have the messages anymore so there's that but um he starts off with not how are you how was the funeral how was this how was that just um hey is this mass and I was like who is this and he told me who he was it was Dave and I was like okay what's up Dave um is something wrong because I assume if you're text messaging me and not snapchatting me instagram messaging because you have all these things why the phone number had to be put in there, I don't know. So, um, you know, says it's him. I ask if anything's wrong. He says, no, I just wanted to talk to you. And I was like, okay, <laughs> you know. Um, then he goes on to say that, I'm trying to remember how exactly he worded it, but basically saying that uh, he was upset that me and the other close friend of our friend that passed away was not at the front of the church for the funeral or something and that people that barely knew this person were sitting up at the front he's like that made me upset I was like 
it literally doesn't matter. <laughs> I was like, um, yeah, it was fine. I just wanted to sit with my friend and I sat with his family. So it was like a whole family on that row and I sat with them. And I was like, it, it didn't matter, you know? And he's like, well, it was just, you know, upsetting that they were sitting up at the front. And I'm like, why are, weren't, I was thinking that they were sitting with them. I guess they weren't. Um, but I was like, it's really not that big of a deal. It wasn't about me. I could care less, you know? It was a funeral about my friend. Never asked me how he's doing. Just trying to like, I guess, and this was another thing he did, try to pin me against other people but it never really worked, at least not on my end, because I just didn't care. At the end of the day, I didn't care. <laughs> and it's like, I'm going through a lot, been crying all day, been to a funeral, been to an after party for the funeral, because that's something we do here. Um, and so I had to go to my friend's grandparents' house and we had to eat, I wasn't hungry. And also I kept shoving stuff into my mouth. <laughs> So it was just a big day of emotions and I could have cared less where anybody sat in in the church. That doesn't mean anything to anybody. It's just like, I just didn't understand where this was coming from, why it was coming. And so after that, you know, it was kind of it. It was like, he realized I wasn't gonna say anything. And then he was just like, okay, I'm gone. And I'm like, okay, he's never texted me since. Never even, and this is what upsets me the most. And after this, after the funeral, I kind of realized who was my real friends and who were not my real friends. There was people that couldn't even make it to the funeral and still message me, even even if it's not like every day, every week, every month, still so much more frequently than this person that I have understood now that we were never friends. And I understand that now. But like, you didn't ask me how I was doing. You did not care. <laughs> And that's okay, that is perfectly fine. Um, you don't have to do those things, but like to use your one text message to me to say, hey, this was not cool at the funeral. What? There was already stuff that we had to deal with at that funeral that we didn't even want to. Like, so there was that, a second red flag, third red flag. Um, and I actually have evidence of this one. So he texted me, or he Instagram messages me. This is also, I guess the first time he's messaged me on Instagram because I could not find any messages, even though I could have swore we've talked on Instagram before. Um, but, so it starts off with um, like, hey, do you remember uh, something that happened in middle school? And I'll put it up here so you can actually read them. But essentially it was like, he had this memory of we were at an awards day ceremony he like shoved me to move me out of the way and I was like oh okay you know it's not that deep I don't care um I was like that was so many years ago I blacked out middle school I don't remember anything from it um so I don't remember this but I'm sure it's okay he's like no you were like really mad about it and I was like well I'm not anymore because I don't have a memory of this and he was like no like and I was like I was tripping over myself. So I remember saying to him, you know, it's cool. You probably deserve that award. You know, like it's okay. And he's like, no, you were like really mad about it. Like, <laughs> like didn't apologize for it. So he's not sorry. And my dumb self was like, it's okay. Like he's not apologizing. He doesn't need me to tell him it's okay. He's just telling me that he did this bad thing to me that apparently upset me and he remembers it. <laughs> and so, it you'll see at the bottom because I needed some kind of confirmation that he did that thing with that person, the fake Instagram account. And so, I messaged him asking, hey, I had a memory of you doing this thing. I was like, do you remember? <laughs> Basically, like, I just want a confirmation so, like, people don't think I'm crazy. Um, but he just, he saw it. But he's the type of person, he's such a strong personality that, like, if he didn't do it, he would have been, like, messaging me and be like, oh my gosh, don't blame me for that. Like, oh my, you know, don't associate me with that. Like, he's that person. Uh, <laughs> but he just, he saw it and he ignored it. Again, he doesn't need anything from me, so... I guess that's probably why he ignored me too. 
it feels good to talk about these type of things. I have another one coming out. Um, but it feels so good to talk about these type of things. Because it's never, like, me trying to get revenge or, like, I guess paint people in bad light. I mean, I'm not trying to do that. I'm just telling what happened. I guess I could tell you how to deal with it. If you want to know how to deal with toxic people, just stay positive about it. And just eventually they'll get bored with you. That's really it. They eventually get bored with you. Um, <laughs> but it feels like a very big chapter of my life has closed. And now I would like to block this person. <laughs> So I never have to deal with them again. I don't want them ever reaching out to me again. I'm done. I don't want them messaging me, reminding me of something that they did to me or that they remember that they they or somebody else did to me and that um, I was so mad about it. I was so upset about it. Am I still upset about it? Like, no, I'm not upset about it. I don't care anymore. But like you keep holding on to these things and you keep like, <laughs> I just, I can't. I genuinely can't. But yeah. This has been my toxic friend story time. It is running over 20 minutes. Oh my goodness. Um, and this is probably like the first video I've been able to do like an actual sit down for and just record the whole thing. And this is so freeing almost. And I have another one coming. I can't wait to do that for you. So my name is Madison. It has been a time. Um, <laughs> I upload every Monday or is it Wednesday? Either way, the last few weeks of Christmas is going to get kind of hectic. Um, this might even go up in January, so I don't know what my schedule might be then. Um, but I think right now I was doing the Wednesday and Friday type deal. Um, so that's when I upload. I love connecting with you guys on all different forms of social media. So follow my social media links down below and we'll have a good old time. <laughs> be sure to subscribe, ring the bell, any other type of things. I do story times. I do, uh... okay, I just got a message about work. <laughs> I do kind of a mixture of everything on my channel I really don't stick to a whole lot of things maybe it is more centered around makeup but it is fun kind of mixing it up doing different kinds of things so this was a story time about my toxic friend that that chapter is now closed you couldn't see my bottom hand but closed and it just it feels weird knowing that I once associated with people that were so not interested in me <laughs> that were not wanting me as a friend but wanted to call themselves my friend that's more of what it is um but yeah and if this if you got anything from this at least entertainment maybe to know how to deal with someone that is also like this uh and i hope the best for you i hope you make it out hope you find great friends and as for the people that are like this i just hope Somebody tries to reach out to you and talk to you about it. Hope you like figure, figure I hope you have the best in life. <laughs> I really do. Like, I mean, no shame, no hate. I hope you get everything you want out of life, but I hope mentally you are okay and you get whatever help you need. This goes for anyone out there. We love having mental health talks. Um, and yeah, that is the end of the video. Thank you so much for watching.